This is a demo of my workflow for writing reproducible academic papers using R Markdown, R Studio, Sotero, and LaTeX templates. Imagine your workflow goes from left to right on this axis of time. In my case, uh, it often looks like the following. I will start by doing a large number of quantitative data analyses in R Markdown using a program called R Studio. If you don't know, an R Markdown document is simply a text file that you save with the file extension .rmd. And what it allows you to do is to mix text written in a syntax that's called Markdown, that's where the Markdown part comes from, with chunks of code, that's where the R part comes from, uh, that can be written in a large number of languages, including R and Python and other uh, languages. And then uh, one of the really cool things is that you can take this document and then you can compile it into a large number of different output formats, such so as HTML or PDF or Word or whatever you need, really. It is really useful for two main reasons. The first is that it encourages you to document your analyses and mix text and code so that your future self can more easily understand what your past self was up to when you did your analyses. But then it also allows you to create reports and papers where your results are dynamically generated from your data. So it's reproducible and transparent to you how those numbers came into your Word file or your PDF file or your HTML document and so on. When you open an R Markdown file in this program called R Studio, then you get superpowers. Then you can use it either as an interactive notebook where you can run the different chunks of code and see what the results are, uh, or you can also easily compile the different output formats available by clicking this friendly uh, knit button. So eventually when I'm done doing my initial quantitative data analyses, I will start to write up my paper also as an R Markdown uh, document, because R Markdown has actually got all of the different bells and whistles available that you need for writing an entire paper, such as uh, citations and cross-referencing and so on and so forth. When I write my paper here, I'll be using Sotero as my reference manager, because that integrates very neatly with R Studio, as I'll show you in a second. Uh, at some point, when I need to get feedback from my collaborators, I will often output my R Markdown document to a Word document that I can upload to Google Docs because everyone knows how to give uh, feedback on Google Docs. Uh, or if I work with collaborators who prefer using LaTeX, then I might output my R Markdown documents to a LaTeX document that I can upload to Overleaf. Overleaf is kind of like Google Docs for, for LaTeX enthusiasts. Eventually, when we need to submit the final paper, then I will go and use the LaTeX template from the journal, and I will adapt that for use with R Markdown. So again, I can go from my R Markdown document to a final PDF formatted according to the journal's uh, preferences, um, you know, but, but still keep R Markdown as the center of the universe here. So I have a single source file so that it's very, very transparent uh, and reproducible how uh, the results in the final uh, paper uh, were arrived at. Let's see what each of these elements might look like in practice in the Tori example. Let's begin with the quantitative data analysis part. So here's the Tori example where I've got two R Markdown files, one for the analysis and another one for the paper. I've also got a folder here with a LaTeX template that we'll look at in a second. I'm gonna open up our studio here, and then I'm gonna open up the analysis R Markdown file like this. Welcome to our studio if you haven't seen this uh, program uh, before. Just gonna make this uh, full size. Uh, so as I told you here in our studio, these different chunks of code, we can easily run them. And you'll also see we have sections here where we just have ordinary uh, text. I'm just gonna collapse the different sections so we can see more clearly what's going on. So here we'll just read in some data, we'll analyze the data, and then we'll save out the results. So to make things easy, we're just gonna use a built-in data set uh, into R, it's called empty cars. It just has some information about cars and how far they drive per gallon of fuel and so on. Then imagine we wanted to maybe analyze the mean miles driven per gallon for cars with different number of cylinders. So we could calculate that by writing a couple of lines of code like this. That would give us something like the following number of cylinders by the average miles driven per gallon. And then imagine we just want to save this out into a CSV file. Let's say that that was uh, the first step, that, that was our glorious data analysis. Now let's try to write up a 
just as glorious manuscript uh, based on this uh, analysis. So I'm going to open up the paper uh, R Markdown file here. And similar to before, let me actually just collapse the different sections. So you can see here we have introduction, methods, results, discussion, conclusion, the usual suspects. In the introduction, we're just writing that this is a great paper because it's reproducible and the methods are great, trust us. And in the results section, let's begin by reading in uh, this uh, uh, calculation of miles driven by uh, cylinders that we just calculated before. Imagine in the results section, we want to start by telling the reader how many cars we have in our data sets. Uh, so we can see we actually have 32 cars. So obviously we could write, we have 32 cars, but a better way of doing it because uh, we're now in the R Markdown world is that we could have that number taken out directly from our data. So that if our data changes and maybe we exclude a car, then that number is automatically updated as well when we create our output. So we could write something like this. We have data from backtick R, backtick the signals that there's gonna be a line of code coming. Uh, and then we can just ask for the number of rows in the empty cars data set. Similarly, one might want to have a, a table with the uh, this mean miles by cylinder thing instead of fiddling around with doing that manually in Word or whatever, and then forgetting to update the numbers, we could just have that uh, data inserted as a table automatically with the, the cable function. So now if I click uh, knit, what should happen is that we should see an HTML file automatically generated where all of this stuff is in here by magic. And we do, amazing. You can see even the table is even being numbered here. Okay, so you can imagine easily how we could build this up. Now let's try to insert a citation. So maybe we noticed uh, that uh, this looks like the finding from, and then we know some sort of paper that we want to cite. We can actually use something called the visual editor to do this in our studio. I'm gonna click this and you can see now we have a slightly more friendly version of looking at the same R Markdown document here. And in the visual editor, I can actually click insert and insert a citation. And I can read off directly things in my Sotero library. I can also search in PubMed or by DOI or whatever. But I'm just, just gonna use Sotero here and I'm gonna be self-indulgent and cite myself and insert myself there. So this looks like the finding from Links 2020. Now, if I knit again, what you should see is that we have said, this looks like the finding from Links Dell 2020. And I'm also inserted as an actual uh, reference here. Brilliant. Um, we can even do cross references. So imagine that here we want to, to point to the table and say the answer to the question is in table. And then we get this suggest so auto completion in this particular table. Now, if I knit, you like to see that in our paper, we have a cross reference now to uh, the answer to the question is in table 3.1. Boom. Also, when I inserted this uh, citation, you'll see that I ultimately have this reference.bip file generated where the uh, bip tag for the citation I inserted is inserted automatically. Good. Uh, in terms of getting feedback, I promised you that we could output to a Word document. We can indeed. The way to do that is by uh, specifying that we want this Word document output up here in the top. So now I can knit and what we should get is a Word document. There it is. We could obviously upload this to Google Docs and then get feedback there. And then finally, uh, if we want to submit this uh, to our journal, then uh, we could go and uh, tell our markdown here that we want a PDF document and that we want this particular template to be used so I downloaded this template from the Plus One website, and then I adapted it a little bit to tell our markdown uh, where to insert content. And then when I specify this template and click the knit button, then we should hopefully, fingers crossed, get a correctly formatted paper for the Plus One journal. The main challenge for my workflow is here because there's currently no good automatic way to merge edits from your collaborators from Google Docs back into your R Markdown source file. So I do that manually. 
I am happy to do that. I don't think it's a deal breaker because it actually just ensures that I look at and engage with every one of my collaborators' comments.